Yeah, bro. It is nice talking to you after a very long time. Yeah. Do call when you come to Bangalore. Okay. Yeah. See you then. Bye. Oh, that was a long time, friend. So it's been a very long. I have talked to him, and after that, it's good to talk to a very old friend. You know something? We actually don't forget some people in our life just because he's my school friend, and we all actually remember him because of few stories. Actually, when we were in school, he used to copy from our answer papers. So the thing is, even though he copy from our answer papers, and uh, he actually innovate and improvise in his own manner, and finally he'll be getting good marks. <laughs> That's one main reason. Actually, I still remember him from our childhood days. So I don't know why I'm talking. This this to you guys but today we have a very interesting motorcycle and that is the Honda CB350 what's up youtube welcome back to another review so today we have the Honda CB350 the new motorcycle in the market which actually resembles an old motorcycle in the segment <laughs> which is obviously the previous version of classic 350s and actually i have to say that this has got a lot a lot of quality so this is not just a first ride impression of this motorcycle but i have taken this bike for a long tour and after that i came to bangalore and i switched to a new bike and now i'm doing the review on this one so this is basically a long term review kind of a thing looking from the front the graphics the kind of parts everything actually seems very very familiar for us especially for indians if we look at the front we can see a fork cover here so this looks beefy and we have a broader or wider front mud guard and the headlight and a lot of chrome elements here and a little bit of inspiration from the bonneville series on the tank and here we have the same engine that we have seen with the highness so there are not much difference on the engine but the thing is we have a longer exhaust now so the engine actually doesn't sound too loud in the sense uh, the highness wasn't too loud but this is a little more silent than the highness now so it's a new exhaust a longer one of course a classic looking exhaust and here we have a classic looking seat split seat seat is actually very comfortable very cushion this one has a seat cover uh, looking from the back again we'll see that tail light which is also very familiar on a classic motorcycle so yes the major difference between this one and the highness is that yes of course this get the front suspension cover and also 0.2 or 0.5 liters more tank capacity on this one and it's 4 kg heavier than the highness so basically yeah a lot of chrome elements added the headlight section and we'll see that silver color on the suspension and the hull bar is chrome uh, the exhaust is chrome we'll see a chrome section over there so altogether yes it is a a bit more a chromish version of honda so the switch gears and everything looks much similar from the highness so this is a pro variant so that's why we are having these switches so with this we can navigate through the dash and here we have the pass switch indicator on the horn here we have the kill switch and the caution lamp and the handlebar actually is a little tilted to the rider side which gives a different kind of a ride feel so when i sit on the motorcycle of course it's not a tall motorcycle but it feels a little taller i don't have planted foot on both side because the seat is wider so i'm sitting much comfortable i have a wider leg feel so this motorcycle actually feels a little taller but on papers it's not a tall motorcycle at all and my hand is actually completely resting on the handlebar because the handlebar is actually bent towards the rider so that's the major difference so on an rs actually you sit little leaned on to the handlebar uh, which is a bit sporty as well and on the highness you have mostly upright on this one it is like a bit more towards the rider and the foot peg is front set so that means a complete classic riding feel i think i have seen this kind of a dial in one of an older model of classic 350s and when we turn it on here we have the speedometer uh, the max speed that we can go is 120 125 not more than that here we have the total kilometer two trip meters average running mileage mileage for trip a and battery voltage and uh, fuel gauge time gear position indicator and there's a service interval remainder also there very basic information but it looks good so before we start our ride i'll just turn the motorcycle on and let's hear the exhaust sound so it's not as thumpy as the rs or the highness because it's a longer exhaust and feels a little muffled so let's go out for a ride So we are back on road so now let's do the rituals So I know that you might be confused that why am I not pulling the bike hard or pushing the bike hard or whatever it is I did it on purpose because this motorcycle has a feel in it and this has to be ridden like this so the character of the engine is 
it has a good mid range the initial torque is okay that's what i'll say and there is not much stop and performance as well so altogether i'll say that yeah shifting in that mid rpm is the nicest thing that you can do on this motorcycle so unnecessarily pulling it to the red lines is not at all required on this motorcycle so that is a kind of a character of this engine so this engine actually feels good because there are absolutely no vibration so as i mentioned we were actually going for the trip and uh, i think we did almost uh, 600 to 700 kilometers in 2 3 days uh, i was not actually riding this motorcycle all the time but yeah i was riding this as well uh, so what i observed is that this engine doesn't vibrate at all because in the fifth gear this is actually a five speed gearbox so in the fifth gear top end it is not able to hit the rev limiter so it is doing a 120 but no issues at all and the fifth gear is actually a little lethargic it's not little lethargic it is very lethargic so till the fourth gear we have the power and after that the power actually is not at all there so if you have that kind of a character if this is what you expect from a classic motorcycle obviously classic motorcycles are like that you never expect a classic motorcycle to behave like a sports motorcycle or a track based motorcycle you take it slowly you enjoy the scenery you enjoy the road you enjoy the heat you enjoy the sweat <laughs> you just take it slow and also when i was riding the guard section what i felt is that i was almost riding this motorcycle in the first gear itself i i roll on i hit the red line and then i come back i i don't really care to shift to the second gear because if i shift to the second gear and if it's a steep then i have to again come back to the first gear so i just kept in the first gear itself and the beauty is after completing that guard section the motorcycle didn't had any trouble at all like no engine oil leaks or no coolant leakage or any rattling sound nothing like that it was just like that reliability is what i could feel from that because if it was some other motorcycle and i was doing that kind of an abuse for around uh, 45 minutes to 1 hour then probably that something would have happened for the engine something something would have happened i don't know what to be but something would have happened to the engine so i could feel that kind of a reliability when i was riding that guard section and uh, keeping the engine apart the riding push as i said the foot peg is actually to the front so it gives a lot of uh, that classic bike feel and the braking is actually different because now the weight distribution is different now we have a 50 50 percentage of weight distribution we don't have total weight onto the front side so we have to use the rear brake also so a combined front and the rear brake actually gives a good braking confidence but we have to use the rear brake also because of this weight distribution and also the riding posture is super nice calmly cruise on the highway like this i am at 80 km of speed i'm just enjoying everything and i'm on my own the suspension is actually very good i like it because suspension is set to a softer side that means when i was going through bad roads actually it takes up a lot of things like an adventure bike uh, i don't say the suspension travel is like that but the comfort that this motorcycle the suspension is giving is appreciable it is almost in par with adventure motorcycle suspension comfort and also to the top end of the 120 or 125 that we could do on this motorcycle the suspension is actually holding up well it was not at all too wavy and all i mean even if we are on a corner and we are doing it 120 take it if it's not a very acute corner so suspension wise it is also good and the clutch feel is like ultra light ultra light means ultra light uh, if you are riding it inside city you don't face any kind of uh, fatigue after using this kind of a clutch and the gearbox is precise no false neutrals very precise shifting very confident even if you are a beginner you will be able to uh, ride this motorcycle comfortably and also for the gear shifting you have separate levers for the upshift and the downshift so that gives a lot of comfort for beginners and tires i'll say that this is kind of an okay tire for this motorcycle the grip is good on a decent wet grip and decent dry grip what i'll say is that i see a lot of people switching from this tire to harder common tire even harder common tire which puts actually this motorcycle into a bad state in the sense the abs will kick in very early or the traction control kicking in very early by the way this has a traction control as well so i believe if you are buying this motorcycle and going for a tire change you should go for a little more stickier tire because i know people who have been using better tires and they are actually very happy with the motorcycle no wobbling and all uh, so the wobbling issue comes when you have bad tire and this one the pro variant comes for 2.79 lakh on road so in general i'll say that if you compare it with other 300 cc then i'll say that it's kind of decent pricing and if you are comparing this with the 150 cc motorcycle then probably you'll get a uh, 150 cc for around uh, 1.5 to 2 lakh max 2.5 lakh uh, but the difference is yes this is highly reliable this is highly refined uh, you will feel that kind of a comfort on this motorcycle uh, definitely no other 150 cc can give this kind of a comfort so that's the addition that you get on this motorcycle so 2.79 lakh is a decent pricing 
and uh, service interval is like for service obviously in 1000 kilometers or one month and from then on it is six months or 6000 kilometers and the service bills are like 2500 to 3000 and what i got to know about the mileage is that you will get something like almost 35 kilometer per liter inside city and 40 or even better than that on a highway and uh, i'm not actually surprised to hear that because when we were riding it on the highway I, we were sensing a good mileage from the motorcycle so in that sense it is actually economical to maintain as well uh, now let's come to the verdict so if you ask me if, if this is a beginner motorcycle then i'll say that yes this is a beginner classic motorcycle so only one thing which is not beginner in this motorcycle is the heaviness of the bike it is a little heavy but not too heavy uh, like the previous version of the classic 350 where uh, you'll get scared but this one is uh, heavy but controllable the confidence is there you will get used to the motorcycle in a day or two the braking is comfortable the uh, suspension is comfortable it's not at all a motorcycle so altogether it's a beginner friendly motorcycle uh, even if you are switching from a scooter or something like that and if you are switching from my 150cc motorcycle then probably i'll say that you don't face a lot of power jump obviously this is not a power oriented motorcycle it's a more comfort oriented motorcycle and uh, i don't see a really good reason for you to switch from an existing 300cc to this motorcycle unless you want reliability and comfort nothing else and this motorcycle is actually good for city use in the sense when we go through these kind of bad roads this motorcycle is actually very comfortable the only thing is like when you approach a hump you might have to shift to the first gear so if you consider yourself heavy say if, if you are about 90 kg and all then you will face a little bit of problem when you are with a pillion because when i ride alone i don't have any problem because i'm my weight is around 65 to 70 kg but if the overall weight the load on the motorcycle is beyond 120 or 150 kg then definitely you face that kind of a initial lag problem just taking off the hump climbing a hill won't be a problem since you are moving but when you are coming to a dead stop and then taking the motorcycle actually struggles a bit if the rider on the pillion is heavy and uh, we have decent leg room for all sort of uh, tall riders or short riders uh, not at all a problem very comfortable to sit and uh, uh, coming to the highway yes obviously you can tour at 80 km per hour or 120 km per hour and you get a very good mileage as well as i said no refinement issue you can have your tank bag set up here you can have all your saddlebags and things tied up over there if you are going for a long distance touring with your pillion then probably you might have to see for a broader seat for the pillion otherwise i don't really see a modification you need on this motorcycle and of course this is not an off-road centric motorcycle you can argue that yes in uh, olden days people used to do ladakh rides and all sort of off-road rides on a classic 350 and uh, other kind of bullets so in fact the point is during those days we were not having many options many budget friendly options for off-road motorcycles there were no experts there were no himalaya there were no adu 390 that's why people were taking known motorcycles a motorcycle where you can fix on the go that's one reason why classic 350 became so popular for off-roads especially for the ladakh rides certainly you don't have to take this motorcycle for ladakh ride and all because one thing it is heavy i admit the fact that it is a little heavy not as heavy as a classic 350 but it is heavy and not so comfortable for off-roading so this is a comfortable highway tour so that's my personal feeling back on that and if you ask me if, if i had to own this motorcycle then do i require any kind of modification i don't really go for a dollar windscreen because of two things because one if you have to keep a windscreen then you have to find a good truss setup to hold that thing uh, if that thing starts rattling then it will become a irritation for my head and secondly if you add a windscreen it adds up a drag so most probably it will shave off 5 km or 10 km from my top end so i don't want to do that so i'm comfortable with this 80 to 120 uh, getting some air and enjoying a good view so i don't really require a dollar wind screen but i require an auxiliary light because the stock headlight is not good so i might need a auxiliary light that's all otherwise i don't see any need for any other major modification on the motorcycle so that's all my review about this motorcycle so do let me know if you have any doubts on the bike uh, because i have taken this bike for long rides and i know many friends who have been using the highness for very very long in terms of kilometers or in terms of years they have been using it and very happy with it so one wrong decision with the tire makes this motorcycle wobbly otherwise i have never seen people uh, cribbing about any issues on the motorcycle on a longer run uh, i've seen people literally not maintaining the motorcycle like it's just like a piece of uh, a used cloth it's like just put it over there in the side of a garage and then use it for their rides and still it runs uh, i really suggest this motorcycle to someone who was actually looking for a more reliable motorcycle and wanted to keep it for five years or more than that 
and that kind of a person but if you are a power craving person definitely go for something else you can look for the cb300 r or something something in yamaha or something in suzuki or something in ktm and not this one this is purely a classic motorcycle enjoy the wind enjoy the view so that's it i hope this video is helpful for you and as always show some love in the form of likes and comments see you in the next video until then bye bye